Metro Exodus. And in my case, Aurora Edition comes with a double steel box. Flee the shattered ruins of dead Moscow and embark upon an epic continent spanning journey across post apocalyptic Moscow. The story takes place right after the events of Last Light. The main protagonist, Artyom, becomes disillusioned by the regime and corruption. He starts believing that there are other survivors out there and takes up the journey through radiation poisoned wasteland. Well, this game has been a good surprise so far. You will see tits, you will meet cannibals and you most certainly kill a lot of mutants. It has been almost 6 years since I played Last Light and to be honest, I remember nothing about that. The good news is that the Metro Exodus lights my torch in the dark and holds my hand when I feel lonely. To be fair, the release date couldn't be better. Surrounded by a mist of liquid diarrhea, Metro offers a solid story, entertaining gameplay and triple A polish. Although this is not an open world game per se, it has a lot of moments where, where you feel that it is. As you progress through the wasteland, you stop at different locations. Each one of them has a decent sized map to explore. Well, there isn't much to explore, but still I love that there is room to move. You mainly collect ammo and crafting materials, as you can only enter places that the mission requires you to go, although empty train guards and abandoned houses are free to be explored. Once you enter the dungeons, underground walls, or factories, the game becomes a bit more linear again, leaving you little room to explore. The most unexpected thing in this game is the lack of map markers, which is good and bad at the same time. I know for a fact that many people are thrilled to see that there is no hand holding. You can only see the proximity of the place on the map where you need to go and you need to figure out how to get there. There are no guidelines or flashy buttons or... or, or speaking map marker to tell you where is the button or which lever should you pull to advance in the game. And to be honest, I wasted a lot of time just to find the valves and, and the buttons, backtracking and well, I just, you know, wasn't used to doing that anymore. Figure shit out on my own. That is what is lacking in newer games. So this, this you know, although I hated wasting time, I really appreciate how it was made and done. Plus it felt more rewarding as well. But now a quick glance over some negative things too. So your character doesn't speak. We have another mute idiot. I mean, when, when the people you care about get in the contact via radio transmission and ask where you are or are, are, you, are you alive at all and you just stay silent. They might think or assume that you are dead, but no, no, no. Artyom is a stubborn bastard and, and, and will not answer. Oh, and another funky observation is that Artyom can't swim, which, which might be plausible to being locked up in bunkers after the war. Whenever Artyom falls into water, he will just wiggle like a lizard in there. If there is no dry land or nothing to grab onto, he will drown. Your protagonist will drown or get eaten by a mutated catfish. Gun mechanics! I really wish that we had some Far Cry here. Guns in Metro do a lot of damage. You feel the power of each bullet when it leaves the gun and hits the target. But hitting the target is extremely difficult. Now I play on a console and this is one of the worst default aiming settings I have ever encountered. I can move a cow faster than I can aim this gun. Thank God for automatic aim, or you know, even this might not help you, if the target keeps moving. But on the other hand, maybe they're trying to implement more realism, because there is a lot of bullet spread, every bullet flying in different direction, and hitboxes of the enemies are very small. There were times where I wasted 7 to 10 single shots just to get one hit, so that takes care of some of the issues I had. Graphically, this game is good, I mean it still is a wasteland and empty houses, but the attention to detail is done well. I love that you pass through so many regions and climate situations. The game stays interesting. 
You never spend too much time in one place and everything just keeps moving. Every now and then you get thunderstorms, blizzards or you will see sunshine and some parts where the nature starts to blossom again, giving you hope that there might be a better place at the end of this journey. Movements and the animations of the enemies is done well. Graphically it looks so good and they are really hideous looking. They really frighten me sometimes and it's scary to play. I really hated the spider part of this game but not going to spoil anything. Oh, and I almost forgot, Metro has again got multiple endings. Both good and bad endings depend on the choices made in the campaign. These endings are not determined by yes or no answers, those are purely determined by how you play. Do you decide to kill or sneak? That gives Metro a decent replay value. Also, you will miss some of the trophies in your first playthrough, and to achieve Platinum, you will need to complete the game at least twice, with one of those runs being on the hardest difficulty. Crafting system is done okay, it's simplified version and although it's shallow looking, it doesn't need to be much, as it is still a linear storytelling game. And to be fair, story is the only thing leading this game. You get a sense of accomplishment and the game narrative keeps you hooked. There are deceptions, love and sickness, tits and asses, you get all of it in Metro Exodus. I give this game a 7.5 out of 10. I hope that you enjoyed this review. If you did, hit that like, smash that bell and if you dare, subscribe as well. I'm Silly Lamas and thanks for watching. Till next time.